Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirits. We come together on this first Sunday of Lent, knowing that we are in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. Let's bring those areas of our lives to the Lord, where we know we need forgiveness at this time. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said you shall not eat the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy, O Lord. For we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. My transgressions, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. 
Have Have mercy, mercy, O Lord, for we have have sinned. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Have Have mercy, mercy, O Lord, for we have have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. My people, as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all people, because all people sinned. If because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Then, as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all people, so one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and life for all people. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterward he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge of you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and he said to him, All these things I give you if you will fall and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Begone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For a good chunk of my life, I've been somewhat of an athlete. I uh, played all sorts of sports, and in my later years, did a lot of road running and cycling. And with all those, I like to use analogies, with all those, one cannot just put on a pair of shoes and run the Comrades Marathon. You cannot simply get on a bike and ride 100 kilometers. But one slowly builds up through the daily discipline of getting up and running, and then a little bit further, and then a little bit further. And eventually, you can run the Comrades Marathon. And perhaps that's what Lent is inviting us to do. Right at the beginning, we always have grand ideas of what we will do for Lent. And then maybe a little bit through Lent, we start to notice that we lose our enthusiasm. This year, perhaps we're going to be invited to choose something small that I can do daily as a discipline and then slowly build on that 
over these next six or seven weeks. It seems to me the scriptures today are asking us that question. What is Lent and what will you do during this season to mark its difference from the rest of the year? The scriptures suggest three things. That first of all, Lent is our desert. A desert is a place of minimal resources, where water and food are scarce. There's a harsh climate and life is fragile in the face of these elements. In the desert, one has to look and set your priorities very definitely if you are to survive. But a desert is also a place of solitude, a place where life is very different and the pace of life is very different. It's also a place where we notice things that maybe we don't generally see. In the darkness of the desert, one sees the stars in the night sky, the sounds, even though we think they're not there, of insect and animal life. And I wonder if that's our invitation to consider how I will experience the desert in my life in these days of Lent. Maybe that means uncluttering and just one day at a time taking something out and getting rid of it because I don't need it anymore. Maybe it's asking us to relook at our priorities. What do I really need for survival? What do I really need to live well? And let those other non-essentials go. It's also a time where we are invited to notice the things that we don't always notice. And so maybe I take a few moments every day in this season to go out and to look at the night sky and the stars. But Lent, the scriptures tell us today, is also our Garden of Eden. That Genesis story is really one about choice and the use of freedom. And in Lent, we're invited to reflect on the choices that we make. God has given us, like Adam and Eve, the freedom to choose between what is good and what is not good for us. And so, maybe in this time of Lent, I'm asked to take just a few moments each day to consider the decisions that I make. Are they helping me to live more fully? Are they good for me? Or are, like Adam and Eve, they not so good for me? And perhaps the third and final thing that the scriptures invite us to is to see how this time of Lent is a time of vulnerability. Jesus' temptations are our temptations. The vulnerability of Jesus is also our vulnerability. Notice how the gospel outlines those three temptations, those vulnerabilities. Use power to be materially secure so that I'm never hungry. Use power to make sure that I am physically comfortable. Who cares if others are not? Use power to make sure that I am successful. It doesn't matter how I do that. Jesus invites us to consider another kind of power in this time of Lent. The power of God's love and the power of love of neighbor. And so as Lent invites us into this desert to examine the choices we make, to set our priorities right, not to seek to use power for our own sakes only. We ask ourselves, what is it that I will do? What is it that I can do in these weeks ahead? Because ultimately, the season of Lent is not about simply doing. It is about learning to love 
more deeply. God and our neighbor. And what will help me to do that? Let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now bring our prayers before the Lord. For the Church, that she may be a sign of God's light and goodness in our world, and a beacon of hope for the most vulnerable. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are preparing to be baptized at Easter, and all who will be received into full communion with the Church, that they will always recognize the presence of Christ in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For each of us, as we enter the desert of Lent, giving more attention to fasting and prayer, that we may have a true spirit of self-denial and be content with less so that others may have more. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who suffer violence, fear, or desperation, that they will be strengthened through the mercy of God and the support of God's people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our brothers and sisters everywhere, that the Holy Spirit will inspire and challenge us to live out our call to be a poor church for the poor, a community that cares for all on the margins. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, that they will be strengthened by the knowledge of Christ's love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we bring these, our prayers, before you, knowing that you listen to us, and most especially that you gift us with what you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, work of our human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It's become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. What do I ask you to receive this? Let's pray that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May we all accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.